Hello, 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 everyone. We've got a very special podcast for you today. This is just uh, Michael and I discussing our ideas for the Community movie. Hell yeah. It was announced earlier this year that uh, uh, well, one of our favorite shows, of course, is, is Community. We're big Community fans. It's one of the few shows that, like, kind of our whole group references a lot. Yeah, yeah, we just gotta get Chris on it, really. And earlier this year, they... In- They announced that there was going to be a community movie coming to Peacock. It was supposed to start shooting this summer, but uh, there is currently a Writers Guild strike going on in Hollywood, which is delaying production of the film. So uh, we figured maybe uh, we'd write our scripts so that they'd uh, be ready when uh, (laughs) when everyone goes back to work, you know? Yeah. Uh, NBC, you, you can have these ideas completely for free if you concede to the writer's demands. Yeah. No, but Matt, like, actually, there's this, like, thing called AI now, and that could, like, they could just use that to write the script. Like, when you really think about it, we don't actually need writers. I I don't suspect anyone at NBC will actually, uh, watch this video. In fact, they may specifically avoid watching this video. Yeah. Dan Harmon will watch it, though, and he'll leave, like, mean comments on it. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's, that sounds reasonable. But, yeah, these are, these are just... Our ideas for uh, a community movie. Hell yeah. Um, Michael, you're the guest. You can go first. Tell us about your idea for the community movie. (laughs) So I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but um, I I got my inspiration for what I think a good community movie would be when I watched the movie Rat Race, which ironically is a movie that one of my friends who introduced me to community is like, it's his favorite movie, which... I, d- I definitely wouldn't call it, like, anywhere close my favorite, but it's a funny movie. I enjoy it a lot. There's a lot of, like, really good visual humor in it. The characters are memorable. It ends with fucking sma- uh, Smash Mouth at the end. I-, I saw that as a kid, and I do remember, like, a significant amount of it, actually. It's funny. I remember, like, S- Seth Green's brother has, like, the tongue stud... And I remember they end up at, like, that Nazi museum. <laughs> like, like the guy and his family end up at a Nazi museum somehow. Yeah, there's just some, like, real, like, effort that went into making it. Because there's, like, a, the visual humor in the movie is really effective. And it didn't look cheap all the time. It looked like, wow, that actually seemed like it was a somewhat difficult scene to film. Because they're not CG in it. They're actually doing this. But I got the idea where it's like, okay... Here's my pitch for a community movie. I, I think I would genuinely enjoy this. It's one I will say it's more character focused than Greendale focused, but Greendale wouldn't be completely out of the picture. So it's also, I'm going to be like just fully up front here. My ideal community movie has every character in it. Um, if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to throw a fit, but my ideal community movie is like a full reunion. Um I hear some people saying, like, oh, the the old characters don't need to come back. They don't need to come back. But does that really mean you don't? Do you not want to see Troy? Do you not want to see Shirley? Like, come on. Um, So, opens with Troy uh, on the boat. And it's a rescue mission. Uh, Abed's leading the rescue mission, of course. Um, Because he was stuck at sea. He never never made it across. They got lost. Um... What was the guy, uh, what's the guy, LeVar Burton? Yeah, LeVar yeah, Burton. Yeah, um, he's there too. Uh, and that's just like the opening scene is them rescuing Troy. And then Troy failed to go uh, sail across the world. So wh- who does Pierce's inheritance go to? Well, this is the one way that you include Pierce in the movie and you can keep Chevy, away, Chevy Chase away from the rest of the cast too. Uh, is there's a video, Will, of what happened if Troy failed to sail across the world, sail across the world, which is uh, a race for the money, a wacky race. And this way you get to have a bunch, and, and not only is Troy allowed to compete in it, but, like, everyone at Greendale um, is allowed to compete in it. Old, old and current students, you know? Meanwhile, we have Jeff, who's still a teacher at, at Greendale, and him, the Dean, and Chang are the only ones that are left at this point. Britta left... Annie and Abed left, like, everyone is gone, Jeff is miserable, and he's, like, you know, he's becoming a little bit depressed, and that's getting to him, uh, and when this, like, you know, this offer comes, this is, like, something that could save Greendale, because, you know, Greendale is always under some sort of financial crisis, uh, 
but we see a little bit of Jeff's old selfish side come out as he's going to try to win this race for himself. Meanwhile, the Dean and Chang, you know, they could be like a team up. And this is just a way that you can have different team ups. You can have Troy and Abed as a team trying to win the race. You can, you know, you can put Britta and Annie together. You can put, uh, you know, you can have Jeff trying to do it by himself. But at the end, you know, they can all come together, do the whole show, that wholesome side of community off. Um, I just think there's a lot of great opportunities to like character interactions with that. You can like bring back, you know, like Fat Neil, Garrett, uh, Vicky, like all the all the little side characters. You can maybe have some fun one off characters make a comeback. Uh, and yeah, that. Oh, and yeah, bring uh, bring like uh, like some of the characters that were only there for a season, like like um, Elroy or the law teacher, the law enforcement teacher, the Mike Herman Trout. <laughs> Uh, bring everyone back for this. No, I mean, it's it's an idea that you can easily slot, like, any characters from the show into. Yeah. Right, uh, everyone's, like, competing for Pierce's money. I mean, that's that has been, like, a running theme of the show, right? Like, uh, big competitions for, like, a lot of money. Yeah. That was the setup to, like, both the, or, like, like the first two paintball episodes... Well, not the first. The fir- well, the, fir- the first one was, uh, what, priority registration? Yeah. But, you know, they were still competing for something. They were still all, like, losing their minds just for priority registration. And, and I think a lot of people would want it to be a paintball game. Like, they hear that pitch and say, oh, I like that, but why not make it a paintball game? And it's just like, they've already done that. They haven't done this. And the reason I think Rat Race inspired me is because it's like, you can do a lot with a race. You know, a race is basically a sandbox. Like, a lot of crazy shit can happen. And I think it would help the movie. Like, it'd be a fun callback to have all these characters together again. But it is something that the show... It, I think that you could have, like, scenes that they didn't do on the show. Like, it wouldn't just be a rehash of the show. I think it'd be something that could take, like, the best elements of it. And you can slowly have the study group, like, reunite. Like, they're not, like, fighting against each other by the end of it, you know, because... You know, they all learn what's important. That's That was another big thing on Community, is one of the characters doing something selfish, but learning from it. Kind of the sitcom formula. Um, but I think that'd be a really fun way to do it. And, I, and you know, I don't think that's even going to be close to what they do. And I also think that there's a great chance we're not getting everyone back. Chevy Chase is the least likely. I'd say Shirley is the most likely to return. I really hope we get Troy back. It, it feels like he's, like, unresolved. Troy and, Troy and Shirley are un, both unresolved. Pierce got a conclusion. Abed, Annie, Jeff, they got a conclusion. Britta, I feel kind of like she was in the last season, but they kind of like, I don't know. It almost feels like they kind of ignore her at the end. But there's a, I just think, yeah, I just think there would be a lot of great opportunities for character like moments. And that's the best thing about community is the characters. So yeah, I just think it's a good yeah, movie no, to like, man. Put the character, like, put the characters in funny, fun situations, have a fun reunion with it, but uh, keep the heart of what made the show so wonderful there too. Oh yeah, no, it's it's it makes perfect sense as a community movie. I I, I like that idea. Oh, and the race could start at Greendale. That'd be a good way. Like the race starts at Greendale and ends. I don't I don't know where it would end because I don't want it to be like a race around the world because that'd be too ridiculous. But uh. But I'm sure they could think of something fun for that. Have the human being win the race. (laughs) Did you know, uh, according to bonus material, extra material from outside the show, the, uh, the, the Greendale human being is canonically a lesbian? No, I didn't know that. This is true. This is revealed in, uh, like a, a skit that, I think it was a commercial for like like teasing the next season or something. I don't know. I scoured all the bonus material just to make sure Abed didn't reference anything. <laughs> Abed isn't even in that series though. It's just the dean dealing with problems around the school. There's a lot of uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of community bonus material. There's the fucking Did you ever see the evaluations that Dan Harmon did of the cast? Though there's like a season 1 video and a season 2 video. Those are both hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love those. Like, all right, now you can vote for which one of the cast members you don't want to see, and it was immediately Chevy Chase. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, there was, like, animated shorts, too. I didn't really like those very much, though. 
Well, what's your idea? Me to, uh, yeah, I want to hear your idea now. Explain my sure. Let's let's talk about my idea. Uh, so last we see Abed, right? He's going out to to California to like make his own TV series or to work on a TV series at least, not make his own. But I I say like by the time we we see him again, he's sort of moved up in the industry a little. And they're giving him his own movie, but it's, you know, it's like a smaller thing. But he's decided he wants to adapt uh, the story of his time at Greendale, right? Mm. And so, and and he wants to, like, go film a bunch of exteriors at Greendale. And just, yeah, you know, for fun, he, like, invites the whole Greendale team back to, uh, to, to see, like, filming scenes from the movie yeah. that he's working on. But slowly over the course of the film, it's it's kind of revealed that, like, Abed is maybe a little in over his head, he, he's a little over budget, he's taking too long uh, with with the movie, and uh, it's, it's, like, not really in a good state, and Abed doesn't really seem to be in a good state for, for a lot of it, and then... You know, finally they reveal, like, oh, Abed set this whole thing up because he wanted to see Troy again, right? But Troy didn't come back. But then, you know, right there in the final act, Troy comes back, he's got Pierce's money, and he bails Abed out. I like that. Finishes yeah. the movie. It's, uh, like, setting it, having having him making a community movie in the community movie is, like... A perfect layer of like meta to it that you you can make a bunch of jokes about it. Yeah, that right? that's like, Dan uh, Harmon's favorite thing to do. That was Community's favorite thing to do. That's Rick and Morty's favorite thing to do. Poorly, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Rick and Morty does it well at points. Yeah, so like you, you all the jokes about. You know, the movie Abed is making would also be like jokes about the Community movie itself. Yeah. It, it's it, a it's a story that like gets all of them back together like pretty reasonably and you know like Donald Glover doesn't have to be in too much of the movie but uh, he plays like a really big role it gives some conclusion to his character it reunites him and Abed yeah yeah I think that's like ultimately like I think that is probably the number one th if you had to like enter like do a poll. That would probably be the number one thing people want out of a community movie is Troy and Abed to reunite, even if it's not the entire movie, like my idea, and it's just, like, a conclusion, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that might be something that Donald Glover would be more up for. I don't I don't know how involved he wants to be in this, because um, he has moved on, and he has gone off to do, like, you know, some pretty great stuff, um, and maybe taking on a really large role in the community movie would be seen as a step backwards for him. I wouldn't see it that way. I would see it that way if they were doing a revival of the show. It's a movie, so I'd say just if, if the whole thing comes down to not wanting to revert back to the past too much, I get a lot of actors and artists don't want to do that. A movie is fine, just do the movie, but if it's a whole TV show, I get not wanting to do that. But I, you know, that's, that's me talking. I can't speak for any of these people. I would just love to see them all one more time. And I think a part of that is, it's not even like... Let me put it this way. Another one of my favorite shows, I know it's one that you love too, BoJack. I never need... I loved BoJack. I was sad to see it go. I never need another episode or movie for BoJack. Because they ended every no. character in a satisfying place. Um, Absolutely. Community... I am so, like... Jeff had a good conclusion. Abed and Annie had a good conclusion. I think that, that there was room for the Dean to do more. I think there was room for Chang to do more. I think there was room for Britta to do more. It's not like terrible conclusions for those three. Pierce got a good conclusion. Pierce, that was like a, the episode that they, it's the one that they did for the reunion. Uh, Skype reading. Um, that one was good. A good conclusion for Pierce. I, I feel like Pierce got a good conclusion in spite of Chevy Chase. Yeah. And then um, Troy had a good setup to an end in, but it, it, it was a good write-off to the show. Like, he got a farewell episode, but it's one that kind of left more to be... Like, you want to know what happens after that. Did he make it around the world, right? 
Yeah. Even if it was just a line, it would have been nice to have that, you know, but they don't, they don't, they never acknowledge it in the final season. They, they acknowledge Troy in the final season. They don't acknowledge if he made it or not. And surely, I, surely really <laughs> got the, like, short end of the stick. Surely, I think, is, like, the saddest character on Community because her, like, throughout the four, like, throughout seasons one through three, she had a pretty good story like a pretty had some pretty good growth and she ends in a good place and there's a little bit of nuance to it like you know she forgives her ex-husband which a lot of you know i'm sure people watching the show wouldn't want her to do and a lot of uh characters in the show didn't want her to do but you you know she justifies it in her own way it's her life and you know you you accept it you know it's like okay this is a good direction for the character to go season four throws in a line about her leaving her kids at the store in the puppet episode which, you know, they that's kind of the point of that episode. Not not a complete, like, that 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 doesn't really hurt the character too bad, in my opinion, especially of how much it's tearing her apart that she did it. Um, but it's like a stepping stone into the wrong direction. And then season five, her her husband left her again and took the kids with her. Never resolved. And it's like, that is such a sad ending for Shirley. It is. And I wish that, you know, I... I wonder, you know, maybe in season six they were planning on going into that more, but then, you know, the actress left for, you know, personal reasons. It was like uh, she was taking care of a family member. And we just kind of left her there. And I, you know, I... The way they used her in the finale worked for that episode. It did not work as a conclusion for Shirley. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So it's just, yeah, I'm just kind of left feeling sad about Shirley. Like, I think the community movie needs to exist for her more than any other character on the show. Yeah, I I do feel like the characters in community, though, are, like, characters you can kind of sort of keep going back to. Where, like, Bojack, I think there has to be a point where it's like, okay, no, his story is done. Right. Like, these these are all characters I think could come back and still be funny. Right. Yeah, I guess let's pick another comedy then. Like, and this is a show that definitely stayed on too long, but like The Office, I think that show had a conclusion for every character. You know, I agree. I agree with you that like a lot of characters didn't get satisfying conclusions on Community, and that would be nice to see. But I also think like even if everyone got like a decent conclusion, I wouldn't mind seeing them again. Right. Right. I hear you with that. Yeah, I talked for a while. Is there anything else you want to say about your idea? Um, I think it'd be funny if Bill Murray was playing Pierce in Abed's <laughs> movie. <laughs> That'd be really funny. It's like, it, it, yeah, it, it, it is just Bill Murray playing himself in the movie. Like, in the, that's meta too. He's playing himself in the movie, playing Chevy Chase. Um, and he just owes Abed a favor or something. Yeah. I, I think that community is like a show like it's going to do callbacks, but it, it, like, I don't think a movie would obsess over doing that because Dan Harmon has made it very clear that he wants it to like kind of stand out on its own. But what would be some fun callbacks for a movie to have? Uh, I mean, in my particular idea, you, you could definitely like, like maybe you open it on like a super intense paintball scene. And that's, it's supposed to be, like, part of Abed's movie. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's like, a reenactment of one of the paintball episodes, but, like, we, with, like, way more intense camera work, uh, you know, way, like, like go, go all in on it. And you've got, like, these, these actors playing, uh, all of the characters. So it's sort of like it, an over-dramatization of... Of the, the the actual episodes. You know what I think would be a hilarious callback? What? If Zach Braff was the one who played Jeff Winger. <laughs> in Abed's movie. Because there's like a line in like season one. Where Abed's talking about all like the different actors he combines to make Jeff. And Zach Braff's one of them. And Jeff is so insulted by Zach Braff. Zach Braff is one of those actors who, like, gets casted as a joke to play himself and stuff, and he just kind of owns up to that. <laughs> like, Bojack, he was like, that makes me like him more. Bojack is, like, his funniest performance, and he's just playing himself. Yeah. But, yeah, if they had, Zach, if they had like, all these, like, 
cool actors playing the other characters, and then Jeff got Zach Braff. I think that'd be hilarious. I think, like, Abed would have to comment on, like, haha, we got, like, those six seasons, and this is our movie. Yeah. But even yeah. even that could, like, tie into the ending, where he's like, yeah, yeah, this was, like, supposed to be our movie. It could even be, like, um, after that opening scene, he's calling, like, people from Greendale, like, Jeff and the others, to, like, come back. And they, like, say, well, what's up? And he says, six seasons in a movie. Then the title of the movie pops up, you know? Um, yeah. I feel like you gotta have some sort of tribute to Leonard in there. Yeah. Who sadly passed away. I mean, I, I say sadly. He was, like, what, in his 90s? That's a pretty good life. Yeah, no. He, That's a pretty good was... life, and he ended it, like, his last years were spent on a really popular TV show. And even then, he lived a couple years after that, but that's a pretty sweet deal, I think. Yeah. But um, but some sort of tribute to Leonard would be nice. Yeah, I feel like you gotta, like... At, at the very least, there'd be, like, an in-memoriam at the very end of the movie. Yeah. Unless you have something else you want to talk about, I have one more question that we could talk about for this uh, podcast. Uh, go ahead. And this might take a second to think about, but, like, what is your, like, worst case scenario? Like, what is, like, the worst possible community movie? The worst possible community movie. What? what that's reasonable. Like, don't don't say, like, oh, it, it's uh, Community Meets Rick and Morty, and Rick and Morty take up 90% of the screen. Like, something that would actually happen. Like, if the whole thing was, like, just sort of centered on, on, like, Abed working on a show, but then it's just sort of, like... Dan Harmon commenting on working on Rick and Morty. Yeah. That <laughs> and that's all that. he does for, like, for, like, most of the episode is, like, yeah, this is what it was like when I was on Rick and Morty. This is what it's like being a writer for Rick and Morty. Especially if he tried to make some sort of parallel to Justin Rowland. That'd be yeah. bad. Uh, I think, for me, worst case scenario, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, Chevy Chase, I don't expect to come back. Donald Glover, I hope so, but it's, like, it, it is, like, I predict he is gonna make an appearance. I think he will. Like, that's the hopeful side of me. Um, I, I agree it's probably gonna be a smaller role, like what you're pitching, rather than he's literally gonna be in the entire thing. But for me, it would be, like, not even Shirley comes back. Like, it is, they are left exactly with who they had at the end of season six. Because to me, that, it's just like, the movie would be enjoyable, but it would still feel like, it, it's a movie where it's going to continue to not tie up loose ends. Because I do trust Dan Harmon enough to make something, I think even in the worst case scenario, the community movie will still be enjoyable to an extent. Yeah. But I think in the worst case scenario, it's just like, what else were they going to do, right? Like, what if no one was able, no one was willing to come back except the people they were stuck with in season six? I say stuck with. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love every... I love all seven of the Greendale. Seven. Um, the fucking Dean and Chang are fucking wonderful. They Like, I, I'm so glad that they had those two side characters because they could step in and take up more screen time once, you know, Chevy, Donald, and uh, Nicole were out. Like, those two, like... Like, I think the Dean getting a bigger role as the show went on, I think, helped season yeah. five and six. Like, no, I, so I think he's much. a funny character. Yeah, yeah. I think... I, I'll say this. Abed is my favorite character in the first three seasons. The Dean is my favorite character in the last three seasons. Uh, that's probably I, fair. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that he, like, kind of still is funny. In, I, season four, I had my problems if I did a whole video on it. A lot of people have problems with season four. The Dean is the funniest character in season four. Uh, in season five, he still holds a little bit, you know, he's still he's still holding his weight. In season six, I actually think I really like some of his episodes. I think, like, conclusion-wise, I, I mentioned, I, I he does kind of have an episode that, like, two episodes that serve as decent conclusions for him. One is the gay Dean episode. I like that one a lot. Yeah. I love the song that they have for him, but I also love the <laughs> him expressing who he is at the end of it. He's a politician. 
But I also, the, an episode that I'm not that crazy for, like, in terms of, like, the entire thing, the one with all the tablets, like, when they have, like, prisoners attending the community, uh, attending the community college, uh, Greendale. But I do like the conclusion that him and Jeff come to at the end of that episode. The episode as a whole I don't love, but Jeff and the Dean's dynamic I like. I think that's, like, a good closing point for the Dean. Um, it's just there's several episodes after that where they don't do a ton with them. Yeah. And the one with the RV is fucking terrible for the Dean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I do, I do hope we see, like, uh, Paget Brewster and, um, Keith David. I hope we see both of them in the movie. Keith David's, I, I'm sure, he, I bet Keith David will be there. He's, like, like so, he's, like, still in Rick and Morty, like, as the president. He's fucking hilarious in that show. <laughs> oh, Yeah. He's like one of the funniest parts of that show now. I like I, they keep bringing the president back, and it's like you know what? Fine. Yeah. Have it's you seen funny. season six yet? Season six just dropped on HBO Max. I haven't watched it yet. I yeah, need to. The, uh, I I absolutely. He has an episode in season six, and it's fucking great. Um, I think it's the finale. I think it's the he it, once again. There's a president season finale. Um, I, I, honest to God, like give Dan Harmon some credit here. Uh. I know, you know, I, I know Justin Rollins is sour subject now, but like Community season, not Community, uh, Rick and Morty season six is probably the most I've enjoyed the show in a while. It feels like they finally got their foot in. Uh, yeah, it sucks what happened to them recently. I hope they recover from it because season six like gave me so much more hope for the show. But um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, Keith Keith David is fucking hilarious in Rick and Morty. He was I really liked his character in Community too. I do. Too. Elroy was a Elroy was good. Um, what is Patchett Brewster's character's name again? Uh, Frankie. Frankie. Yeah. I liked Frankie. Frankie was like, I, I, it's funny with Frankie because it's like, she is like this voice of reason for the group. And it's kind of funny because that's kind of the point that Jeff had, but it almost feels like Jeff has drifted away from that ever since. Now she's kind of <laughs> the new voice of reason. And I like that. I like that because Jeff is like, He's been around this crazy shit for long enough, and he's given up on being a lawyer. So it does work. It does work. And I, I feel like she is, like, a very different voice of reason than Jeff was. True. And I one thing I'll say is, like, one thing I love about the first episode of season... Season 6 is a mess. As a whole, season 6 has some stinkers in there. But I really like the premiere, because they're trying to introduce her character, and she's not really sitting in that well, but she has a conversation with Abed... And in that conversation, Abed begins to accept her and turn the dynamic. And I did too when I saw that. Because Abed says that is the most interesting way I've heard someone um, talk about not being interesting before. It was something like that. And I was like, yeah, that was. Like, I, I, I completely agreed with him. I was completely on board with Frankie after that scene. Because I remember, like, seeing her introduced in the episode. I'm like, I don't know if this character's going to work that well. And that's the exact mindset they went into making that episode. Was, like, just the idea of adding a new character that people aren't going to connect with right away. And I feel like that was that's, like, a great way of being meta, I feel. Because I think the meta shit that Dan Harmon does, it can be hit or miss. But that was one where it definitely hit. Yeah. No, I I think they they found an interesting way to introduce her to the show. Uh, I think she may be, like, one of the weakest characters ever introduced to the main cast, but I still think she worked overall. Yeah. I think she had a better conclusion than some of them, too. Like, I like... Jonathan Banks cracks me up as this character because he's not only is he a law enforcement teacher, but he also draws cartoon ducks and gets really defensive <laughs> about it. Publishers <laughs> are interested. And that's right after he played fucking Mike Ehrmantraut. <laughs> Actually, no, it's right before... It's right after and before he played Mike Ehrmantraut. It's the one-year <laughs> gap in between Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And he just plays this character that, like is the exact opposite of Mike, but is still performed the same way as Mike. <laughs> and it's hilarious. It's so fucking good. I agree with you, but it's just like community. But the thing is, the community cast is so fucking strong. There's like... Yeah. I think the no, weakest like I, one... I would trade her for Troy or Shirley, but uh, if if we can't have them, I, I, I'll take her. Yeah. Um, I'd say the weakest out of the main characters that were introduced, like, as members of the actual group. And I love this character. I just don't love him as a main character, as Professor Ian Duncan. 
Because in season five, he kind of comes back as like one of the members of the group. And it's like, he worked better as a side character. He did. And he was a really, he was a really funny side character, but it just, he doesn't belong in the group, I don't feel. Yeah. Um, I would say like, they, they never tried to make him part of the main cast, but he was like the teacher for that season was, uh, Malcolm McDowell's character. Oh, that's yeah. like like the one teacher that's like nah this never really landed and i like malcolm mcdowell i just i wish i wish there was ever a point where he was all that funny yeah a- excellent character professor cornwallis is like one of the I, I think i did a character tier list on the duck brigade once like oh he's one of the only f tier characters for me i i really hated his character he wasn't funny he wasn't likable um, the show gave, the characters gave him more significance than he actually had. I swear he gets mentioned more than he actually shows up. They always say, oh yeah, Professor Cornwallis is doing this. Professor Cornwallis has us doing this. It's like, they wanted to establish that this was a character, but they didn't want to show him. And it's probably because the actor was like, who he was. Because he was in some fucking major movies, you know? I mean, I don't know if he was doing much at that time, but I don't know. Maybe it, Maybe he costed more. I don't know. Fucking Betty White leaving after two episodes. <laughs> and leaving still one of the being, biggest impact. Yeah, still being way better than him. And you know what? That's when they introduced Ian Duncan as the teacher and it worked. Yeah, it was hilarious. And then he just fucks off for two seasons, comes back for the fifth one, disappears again. I, I would be okay if Ian Duncan had a small part in the movie. Yeah. Give him a conclusion. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing I've ever seen, like... Him do what's the actor's name again? He's more of like a talk show host. John Oliver. John Oliver. I mean, I've never seen his show. I don't have anything against him personally, but I the only other thing I know him for is Zazu and uh, no, <laughs> no, that bad casting. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's really like an actor. Is the thing. I think he. I think he can be funny. I think he's funny in Community, but I don't think he has like range at all. You have to. You have to have him play John Oliver. Um, and in Community, he plays John Oliver very well. Well, uh, anything else? I think that, uh, that wraps up our ideas for the movie. One more idea for my movie. Sure. Uh, LeVar Burton is on Troy and Abed's team the entire time during that race. (laughs) So, uh, would, like, the Greendale, I guess six, be, like, start out separate and maybe come together by the end? Yeah, I think, I, honest to God, I think the way I would do it is um, Troy Abed, Shirley, uh, Britta, Annie, Jeff, until Annie realizes what Jeff's true intentions are, then she joins one of the other groups, but then Jeff has a change of heart at the end. Jeff could even be, like, working with the Dean by the end of the movie. Um, my idea is that Jeff is, like, you know, he's working at Greendale, and he's, um, I already mentioned, he's not, he's not happy there anymore. He's kind of forgetting everything he learned, um, over, like, the course of knowing these people. And the movie is just kind of, like, a reminder, you know? It's not only is it a reminder to everyone watching what this show meant to them, but it also, it's what this group meant to Jeff, and that's what makes him have a change of heart at the end. Because Jeff just does kind of feel like that type of character to me. He's a, he's deep down a good guy but if you don't keep (laughs) this might sound like a fucked up way to put it but if you don't keep him in line he will act like a douchebag again (laughs) Um, yeah like i don't think that'd be like destroying his character or anything i think every season he had like really awful moments that he would later feel regretful for i think what worked like people always talk about how like every member of the greendale seven is horrible like horrible human beings and I agree if you knew these people in reality, you probably wouldn't like them. But I do also think that the show does paint them in a very sympathetic light. Every every single one of them, even Pierce. Um, yeah. I think, I think you're supposed to like them as television show characters. I don't think you're supposed to want to know people like that in reality. Uh, no, generally not. But I think at the end of the day, you want to see Jeff be happy. You want to see Abed and Shory reunite. You want to see... You know, you want to see Annie be happy. You want to see Britta be happy. You want to see Shirley be happy because you like them. You you don't you, you like them because you don't have to actually engage with them in real life. Then I uh, thank you, Michael, for joining me and telling me your idea for the community movie. Listening for, to my idea. Absolutely, this is a lot of fun. Thanks. I think it was a good conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I guess we'll uh, see you next time. Hell yeah. <laughs>